All right, I know guys, I know I just made a Zeus video, I'm well aware. However, this game, I literally popped off. I have to show it to you guys because it's just, I don't know, this is like the beauty of Dota. Now, I will admit, I think Zeus is one of the best heroes in Dota right now. I think this hero is super flexible. It scales well, it's laning is insane. Like Zeus is a nuts hero, but I went 14-0 and 21 on off lane Zeus in a pretty high MMR game, right? This is Europe, so it's like very, I would say it's like 10K average, something like that. And so this game, I mean, I owned. You can see I'm close to the top of the net worth. Uh, I leaned against the Luna, so obviously she free farm, but I'll get into why that happened and why it's honestly okay. Uh, and yeah, I, I just want to show this off to you guys because like these are the type of things to me that make Dota such a cool game. All right, and before we get into the main part of the video, I do want to let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day, I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're going to teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you want to become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. Okay, in terms of the starting item build, I'm gonna go for a very different build from mid. Mid very much revolves around rushing a bottle because of the water runes. In the off lane, well, kind of the nice part is you get to rush these gnolls, which just got buffed. They give one mana regen instead of 0.75, which is nice. It's a not a huge change, but it certainly makes the difference. Now, what is so good about Zeus as a hero, or especially in the laning stage? Four armor is not terrible. 66 damage for a ranged hero is really good, and 315 movement speed, this hero is very, very fast. So this hero's base stats are just super, super solid, and the Q is a creep secure on for only 75 mana, which is not bad at all. So I get perfect CS on the first two creeps, I'm able to secure the range. You can see the laning, it's pretty easy, right? Uh, good damage plus range secure, as well as high movement speed, makes it pretty easy to just go in and out, pull aggro, and do your thing. And so yeah end up getting near perfect CS on the first waves here. I think I get seven. Pretty sure if I if I get the range creep here. Um, okay, <laughs> I did not get the range creep. But the big thing here, honestly, the reason why I'm like so happy about playing Zeus in this game, and I specifically pick Zeus, I pick Zeus because I'm with a Pudge, right? And anytime you're playing with like one of these heroes like Pudge or Tiny, it can be very hard to lane in the early levels. I mean, I will admit Tiny is a lot better because he picks up a tree and he's like a pseudo range hero, right? He has like pretty good range. But Pudge, if he's not hitting his hooks, he's kind of just doing nothing. And this guy, no offense, if, especially if he's watching the video, but he did literally nothing. He got one denied, that was his basically, okay, he hit one good hook, right? But he honestly did almost nothing. Where the IO was hitting me a bunch, the IO was actively denying, like it was practically a 2v1. And if I'm some useless melee hero, honestly, like that doesn't have a range secure, I might just get run over, but as Zeus, it's pretty easy. And the nice thing too about this hero is as a range hero, like a lot of the range heroes in the off lane, DPs, Vipers, if they get ganked, for instance, by like a Tusk, right? They just die. But Zeus never has that problem because he has Heavenly Jump, right? Which is a uh, super long slow as well. It's a 1.6 second attack speed movement speed slow. Like this thing is insane. I mean, it only hits one target, but it's pretty insane. And so, yeah, that's nice. Another nice thing is a lot of people just won't buy stick. Like this Luna didn't start the lane with stick because number one, she just doesn't want to because her damage would be bad. And number two, she just doesn't even know that I'm off lane. Like, <laughs> like she just did not know, right? So otherwise maybe she would have started with a stick because you know, I'm casting a good amount of Qs. However, you notice that I'm almost full mana at this point and that's very intentional. Uh, I actually don't want to spam my spell. I would rather wait till I'm level three, especially just because that's when Pudge is going to have kill potential. Right? I'm almost strictly using it just for creeps. I will basically never use it uh, to like push the wave. I'll never use it to just casually harass. Like I do it there because I thought it was going to get me two creeps as well as some damage. But generally, you know, I, I'm not using it to, to harass. I will never just casually click it on the Luna. You're just feeding stick charges. It's pretty pointless. Just save your mana. The only time you should use it uh, is if like clearly they're getting low and you can maybe go for a kill. For instance, here, Pudge hits a hook. And even then, I was hesitant to start queuing because I'm like, okay, it's going to give Io sticks. It's going to give Luna sticks. They're just going to heal from it. And we're not actually killing them right there. So uh, yeah, it, it's it's good to just kind of save your mana for when you have a big enough pool where you're like really all in them off, you know, a level three spike. Maybe the Pudge hits three, you know, gets a second plane in Rot. I hit three and I have 588 mana if I'm max mana. Now, ended up using quite a bit here, but that's okay, right? And yeah, I mean, things are just great. Like once again, it's just so easy to play this hero even in what is like nearly a 2v1, to be perfectly honest. Like, I'm, I'm really not trying to go too hard on this punch, but he really hit like one hook and then just walked around. Uh, 
and I'm still like beating the Luna on CS and that's what's so nice like if you have a Pudge and you're like oh my god Pudge does nothing well then you should be drafting a hero that can play around it right like sure then I don't have a stunner offlaner but we have a Pudge he can initiate and my mid is Pangos it's not the end of the world now in terms of my items I buy two nulls just so I have a lot of damage a lot of mana regen a big mana pool plus the mango that I started with I can drop the nulls on the ground pop the mango for like a ton of mana because nulls give a huge amount of mana and then I rush Bassy for the for the mana boots and this just gives me so much mana regen as well as mana to my teammate uh and yeah we end up getting first blood here and this is the power of like sort of conserving your mana not to say that I like giga conserved conserved it but Pudge hits that monster hook and then yeah he hits his level 2 rot timing kind of talked about that they do have the sticks right she had a 14 wand Io has a 7 wand and they're gonna pop that but that's why I retargeted onto the squishier and uh, much slower Io and we end up picking up first blood which was massive so feels super good look at the net worth 200 above Aluna who once again is getting uh, you know, like really enabled by this IO. So I felt super happy with this start. And when you get mana boots, the hero just completely changes because basically the reason why this build is so good is because now every time I have mana boots up, I drop the two nulls on the ground and I pop my mana boots and it gives you like a stupid amount of mana because the nulls give max mana for, for everyone who doesn't know. They give a max mana bonus. So when you drop them, it's just like, I mean, you just cut your mana pool to such a small number. And so I can just, I also buy raindrops just so I'm a little bit tankier against like Luna. You know what I mean? Just those Lucent Beams coming in and just more mana regen. And yeah, I mean, you're so strong at this point. Heroes that lack sustain will just get completely bullied out. Like some Slark just nuked out. Um, I do get a little bit aggressive here. Unfortunately, Pudge dies. Not the end of the world. Just gonna queue him up, drop the Nulls, and I'm back to full mana. And you can see, like, I'm, I'm back to full mana. And at this point, I can basically queue not as much as I want, but pretty close. Like, I'm giving this guy to a very uncomfortable amount of health, nearly just zoning him out of lane because of the fact that I can abuse this null plus mana boot timing, uh, as well as raindrops, right? They obviously help a lot as well. And this hero is pretty good at rotating in the early game as well. Like the main thing I'm looking to do is mostly just stay in my lane and then click ulti to get kills. And this level six timing is so strong, right? Every two minutes, you basically get a kill. That's how it feels. I end up TPing mid. This is just some situational play. I know this DP won't die unless we bring like a ton of numbers. And so, we go for this giga all in play and it ends up paying off. Oh my gosh, she almost lived. That was so sad. Nice disruption from the SD, but yeah, we get the DB kill kind of just help out our mid laner and that hurt my net worth for sure. Like those types of rotations I don't like, but slowing down this DP kind of stopping her from taking her tier one and just also making her scared right in the future. She's just going to have to respect the, the Zeus DP because my hero is just a complete counter to DP. She can't siphon me. I can hop away from it and I do a ton of magic damage, right? It's really, really annoying. And I and I knew that going into the game. I'm like, yeah, my hero's my hero's good against this DP mid, you know? My my rotation from the offlane is very, very impactful. Uh so I was I was super aware of that going into the mid game. Um and it was definitely something I play around. Now, the main timing is just phylactery. So you basically want to stay in your lane and just click ulti for kills until you have phylactery. When you get phylactery, you become a menace because it's so much control and it's so much damage on a six second cooldown. And once you hit Phylactery, you can really get to work on this hero, right? Like, I mean, all of a sudden you have a lot of HP and my Q, I mean, <laughs> look at that Q. That's so much damage. It's like a zero second cooldown. I mean, when the Phylactery comes back up, uh, it's just insane damage. I just put the Luna to half health very, very casually. Just drop her to half health. Io steps up, boom couple of nukes, Io's half health. I mean, this hero in the early game is just ridiculous, right? We take him out, SD steps up, Phylactery slows him, W to mini stun, and yeah, we even chase the SD down. I should have went more aggressive here. I was just afraid of the uh, the DPTP, and we take out the SD as well. Now, from here, there's a lot of angles in terms of items. You can just straight up rush uh, the shard, which I would say is probably the most reliable build. I will admit, I really like buying Kaya. The reason why is it makes your uh, spells do 10% more damage, which is a lot. And it basically guarantees that you have infinite mana, like literally infinite, especially with the null raindrop mana regen from arcane boots. Like you basically don't run into mana and it is nice. You can just spam your Q to farm on everything. Uh, but in this team fight, I mean, look at this. This team fight was huge. We do a massive chunk to the IO. Right. I, I mean, instantly putting him down to basically one health and we're just kiting the outside of the fight. I get disrupted here. Just important that I don't panic, right? I don't. A big thing about Zeus is you don't waste your heavenly jump. So as I get gone on here, I don't panic and I don't click my my E. And what that allows me to do is extend, right? I really go for the kills. And so we're able to pick up the SD and they end up chasing in here, which was just super stupid. I, I don't know what they were thinking. Finally, hop forward here. My ulti comes up. 
in a couple seconds. I mean, that was just a, obviously a major misplay from the DP. Ulti comes out, Centaur dead. And yeah, I mean, we just carried that fight straight up. Their Luna's extremely farm because you're just getting camped by an IO and it's it's Luna. I mean, that hero is ridiculous. But other than that, I mean, we are pretty close to top net worth, only behind a life stealer who's having a fantastic game, three and one with a really, really high CS. And then when you get your shard, your hero just completely changes. You can just farm ancients. Like literally, I'm just taking an ancient stack. Like while doing this, I was like, oh my God, this is just insane. Absolutely insane. I was hoping for a Grove Bow or a Whisper of the Dead, right? The spell amp items. I think I didn't get either of them in this game. I'm pretty sure I didn't get either of them, which was really, really unfortunate because that's what you're looking for. So I think I ended up, yeah, I take, I take Light Collector. I mean, it's more mana, it's some movement speed. It's HP regen during the day, which is kind of nice, but I, I even eventually switch back to the Fairy Strink it just for the spell amp. But yeah, now if the game slows down, you're just chilling. Like literally you can just wipe the map, right? I'm just wiping all these camps and I'm playing like more of a traditional greedy offlaner, right? A Beastmaster, uh, maybe a Pudge offlane, a Bristleback, where you can just farm up all of the outside camps and then show up to fights late. And that's what we do here. We got Kaya Yash online, which is a bit of a greedy build, but it turns into the Manta later on. I get stomped, that was pretty bad positioning, but yeah, that was bad because I had to use my jump, but we just clean up. And then we're back to farming, right? Just like after cleaning up that fight, we're back to farming onto this medium camp, wipe that out onto the large camp. I was thinking about farming towards my team here just to help them with fights, but I was missing some HP and I was getting pretty close to Manta. So I was like, all right, I'll just play the game slow because that's the thing about this Zeus build. I mean, you can just hit your timings. Like I just stack ancients here. And I'm like, yeah, I can just, I can just take ancients. <laughs> I get, like, what is this? You just insta kill ancients. And I think I go pick up the wisdom rune. Like at this point, I'm like, all right, I'm just hitting timings. There's a wisdom rune. I can do an ancient rotation. It's just like, wait, it was just way too efficient not to do. I think a fight ends up breaking out here. It's always good to lead the fight with ulti. It just scouts out, it cancels blanks. It scouts out whoever might go on you. The Luna went on me here, but I hop away. And I also took the talent 30 movement speed after heavenly jump. Plus I had light collector in this case, which gives me 5% movement speed. And I have Yashikaya, which gives me 12%. So all of a sudden I'm a very speedy Zeus. I'm a 456. MS Zeus against, well, unfortunately, a, a stampeded Luna is going to be 550. But when that ends, she's actually slower than me. I guess my my E ran out or whatever here. But uh, yeah, she she is not much faster than me. And it allows me to just straight up run away. High HP pool. The right side talent is what I personally prefer. The heavenly jump target is good, I will admit. But I think movement speed after jump, like in situations like that, is just it's just good. You know, it just really feels nice to be able to kite out that Luna there. And then from the back, I mean, this is just classic Zeus, you know. If you get ignored, I mean, you're going to kill them. That's just how it goes. You're a sniper. It's it's just, I mean, it's nasty when you get ignored. Also, something I learned while playing these games, because I played two offlane Zeus games and both of them, like I completely stomped. And uh, the Q, it does percentage based damage to Roche, which I thought was really stupid. Unfortunately, your shard doesn't work, which makes sense. But the Q evaporates Roshan. Like, why does that work? This hero is so broken. It's just a Roshan hero. Like, I, I had no idea. Zeus is like, probably a top 20 Roche hero, which is just insane. Like, how is Zeus a Roche hero? But he is. So from there, we pick up our Mantas. We're going to start to cut waves just to hit some nasty timings. Going to cut up the mid wave here. And my main goal now is to get to level 20. Uh, we saw them invade our jungle here. So we pick up a cheeky little IO kill, which is always fine. Uh, but the goal is to get to level 20. You want to get the current 6% current HP as damage. I mean, this is one of the most broken talents in the game. Zeus is level 20, uh, easily a top a top talent in all of Dota, just doubling the current health damage on the Q, considering that worked with the Shard and the Mantas, it's just unbelievable. Like, e such a broken talent, such a spike. And so even here, I, I think I was playing probably more aggressive than I should have. In a pro game, I think I would tell my team, hey guys, I'm so close to 20 and let's just chill, wait it out. And that's why I'm farming here. I'm like, I'm so close to 20 and your hero just becomes different. Now I will admit heroes that buy Eternal Shroud, like DP, and Glimmer Cape are definitely annoying for Zeus. And I will say that if you're playing against Zeus, make sure you're buying these items. Like my nukes do basically nothing to this DP. This Eternal Shroud item is really, really insane against burst magic damage. I mean, it's honestly such a broken item in, in these types of games, like where there's like a Pudge and a Radiance and a Pango. And it's insane. Like this DP, I, I mean, I, I quickly realized I'm like, all right, new target, <laughs> kill the IO. Fi I find the SD, but this guy's got a Glimmer. So he's kind of annoying. And I don't want to jump on him to slow him. Maybe I should have just to make sure he can't get away. Eventually, I was just able to bolt him down. And finally, I can find my real targets who don't have glimmers. And eventually, when we get onto the Luna, we just like, I mean, annihilate her. It's just, 
<laughs> Dude, it's crazy. And now we pick up our Arcturine Core, which I think there are other builds you can go. Like, I think Four Staff with Sanch and Kaya is also good because it makes you almost unkillable. And when you buy something like a Four Staff, it lets you heavenly jump aggressively, which is really nice because you do kind of need the slow, even with Phylactery. Uh, you do kind of need the slow. And so going like a tank build makes a lot of sense. But Octarine just feels wonderful. More jumps, more Qs, more Ws, more ults. But honestly, most most importantly, is more Manta. It allows you to cut and farm every single wave that comes in on one of the lanes. And it also just means that you're going to have the Manta for like pushing out the wave and for the upcoming fight, right? Having it for both is a big difference and really, really does matter. Dude, this DP would not die. She almost didn't die there. Yeah, we're top net worth. Like, that's actually crazy. Okay, the Luna just passed me. <laughs> but bruh, like, I know I'm 12-0, but the fact that Zeus has the potential to be top net worth is insane. Yeah, I'm top net. Like, look at that. I'm top net as Zeus. This hero is just different. I have 3,500 HP and I hit like a truck. Like, there, you can't tell me this hero isn't insane. Yeah, there's no way this hero's win rate it, it shouldn't be higher. I'm sure if people really figure out Zeus, like play it kind of how I'm playing at this game, like just using all the mechanics that I'm teaching here, like this hero's win rate has to just be higher. I mean, it just feels way too good. I played it mid as well. Like I played this hero three games today because it just felt so good and I won all of them. And I don't even play mid, like I hate playing mid, but I just own. It was, it was easy. Like it's just easy. This hero's just easy. I just farmed and got some kills and then carried the mid game. Like, like as, as per usual and with the Mantas, <laughs> look at this. Oh my God, dude. Every Q is just a chunk with this 20 talent, just a major chunk. This guy walks forward, zap. Unfortunately, there was a lot of magic resist in this game. This freaking item is like the only reason this hero isn't completely broken. Like the glimmers and the eternal shrouds and cloak, honestly getting the buff it got a while ago, like 15% to 20% magic resist. It makes Zeus somewhat playable. Like even the Luna, arguably, instead of having Wand, should have a cloak. I really, really mean that. Like in a game like this, she should probably just buy a cloak. Like maybe Eternal Shroud, unironically, is her next item. It makes Zeus not much of a hero against you. I'm not gonna lie. Like it's something to keep in mind, guys. But okay, that's gonna be all for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed. I just wanted to show this off. Occasionally I have these pubs where I'm just like, yeah, this is too good not to not to share with the audience and I'm just excited to talk about this game because it, like right after I played the game, I'm like, yeah, I'm making a video on that. That was too fun. And then I played a bunch of Zeus games just to guarantee it was actually good. And it wasn't a fluke game uh, and it definitely wasn't. I mean, I, I owned I owned the other game, too. I owned an Animage in lane. I stomped an Animage. I doubled his net worth. I, this AM was like giga poor. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.